In this video, we're going to continue our study of voltaic cells by looking at this simple battery. So let's establish what we have. We have a strip of zinc, this will be one electrode, and we have a strip of copper, which is the other electrode. And we also have a solution of zinc ion and a solution of copper ion. Now, how did we get the zinc ion in here? Well, it's just water and an aqueous solution of zinc sulfate. And over here, it's just water and an aqueous solution of copper 2 sulfate. So just like before, electrons will transfer from zinc over to copper ion. So let's see if we can uh, follow this path. So here's a zinc atom you know that the zinc is going to get oxidized and lose electrons. As it loses electrons, the zinc will turn into zinc plus two. And the two electrons that it loses will travel through the electrode and through the wire. And it will travel over here because there's a lower potential energy over here. So as the electrons travel from high potential energy to low potential energy, we can use that difference in energy to light a light bulb. Okay, so now the electrons are traveling to this copper electrode. So this is now electron rich, giving it probably a negative charge. And you know that this copper plus two is going to get reduced. So the copper plus two will be attracted to the negative electrons that are located in the bar. So when copper plus two comes in contact with those extra electrons, it turns into elemental copper. So what we should see over time is this bar begins to get bigger and bigger and more copper accumulates on it. Conversely, this electrode gets smaller and smaller because the ink is eaten away or is oxidized away and enters the solution. Because we have oxidation, here, at this electrode, this electrode is called the anode. And this electrode is called the cathode because we have reduction taking place there. Now we've established that electrons are flowing from this side to this side. Well, very quickly, these negative charges would build up and it would create um, a separation of charge or an imbalance. So what's required in all these type of batteries is something called a salt bridge. And inside the salt bridge, of course, is salt, probably sodium sulfate, something like that. So if we're sending negative charges over here, in order to complete the loop, these negative sulfates will have to travel this direction. Um, conversely, these sodiums are positive, will travel this way. So we're not going to spend too much time um, studying this salt bridge, but just keep in mind that the salt bridge is there in order to allow the reaction to continue so charge doesn't build up. Now let's go ahead and write the half reactions, one for zinc and the other for copper. So once again, we see zinc is turning into zinc ion as it loses two electrons. And copper ion is gaining two electrons and being reduced to elemental copper. Now you know that batteries can be made from a variety of materials and some deliver more voltage or produce more voltage than others. So let's say we wanted to know how much voltage can be created from a zinc and copper battery. Well, we have a table. We can look that up. Here's zinc and there's copper. This is hard to see, um, so I've blown this up to make it look a little bigger. So let's look up zinc. Here's zinc gaining two electrons to make elemental zinc. Here's copper gaining two electrons to make copper. So notice that both of these reactions were reduction potentials or were reduction reactions. But we just studied the battery and we learned that zinc is being oxidized. It's copper ion that's being reduced. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this sign. Zinc is being oxidized, not reduced. So take this negative sign and make it positive. Because if the reduction of zinc ion 
has this value, the oxidation of zinc should have exactly that same amount, just opposite in sign. So we'll have positive 0.7626 and 0 0.340. So here's the potentials for each half cell. If we add those together, that should tell us the cell potential or how many volts can be produced by using a zinc and copper battery.